Just remain standing for a second. We want to welcome everyone that's watching from their comfortable homes. We wish you were here. We know that there's going to be a transition coming. There's going to be many transitioning physically this direction as Abba leads you. We already knew that. We can hear it. We can smell it. We can see it. It's going to be exciting. We are excited. I don't know about you guys, but we are fired up. I'm excited about today. I'm going to open up with a word of prayer. Um, I know we had some guests here, some, some new guests, so we want to just welcome them wherever they're at right now. We want to say thank you for showing up. You went somewhere. Um, but Abba, we praise you. We thank you for your word, your word that is unchanging, your word that is riveting, your word that pierces beyond what we can see to the very depths of the soul of man. We thank you, Abba, that you have sent forth your word and it will not return unto you void. It will accomplish exactly what you sent it out to do. And Abba, you have blessed your sons and daughters of your kingdom with the authority of your name. You have blessed us, Abba, with a crown of glory, a crown of power, a crown of your kingdom, a very crown that comes from the Shamaim above, the heavens above, an expanding authority, an expanding royalty, an expanding dominion here on the earth this day. Today, Abba, you have given us this, this very gift. So we praise you and thank you for the word that is about to go forth. We have no idea in totality which direction you're going to take us, but we know that it's going to be powerful, exciting, and life-changing. I pray even now, Abba, as that Canaanite woman came to the master's table, healing is the children's bread. Abba, we thank you that you are bringing us to a place of, of not just healing, but health, wholeness, to a true fulfillment in our lifetime now. We thank you that shalom, shalom is the carrier of your brachot, your blessings. So we thank you that peace, shalom, the peace that surpasses the understanding of men that cannot be stolen, that cannot be taken, that cannot be destroyed, your very peace that is found at your table that you have set before us right smack in the face of our enemies. We thank you that we feast upon the bread of your kingdom. We eat the bread of righteousness. We eat from the table of our Melech Sadiq, our righteous king, our Kohen Hagadol. And we praise you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. Do you guys believe you're seated in heavenly places? <clears throat> well, I believe it, even if it's just a few of you. But once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Please stay tuned. Do not turn the channel off. Do not leave anywhere. I believe that Abba has a powerful word for us. I don't know how far we'll get, but we will get somewhere. Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and say, I hope you're ready. I hope you're awake. Say, we should never fall asleep, no matter how boring the preacher can be. be come on now, what happened? No matter how boring the preacher can be, because... When his word is proclaimed, that is a grace given to us that we should be wide awake and never sleeping and never slumbering. Hallelujah. So you guys know the last time I was up here, we have, uh, we began a, a series in rotation and the last time I was up here was an introduction. Today's going to be part one. So it's not part two, it's part one. It's about the tabernacle kings and priests, which is kind of foreign to, to our knowing because you don't really see kings inside of the tabernacle. We saw some Levitical priests in the physical tabernacle, but embedded in that physical tabernacle, Abba gave us the revelation of who we are 
even inside of something tangible and something that seems so small and, and even petty on the outside, inside was something more than silver and gold. Inside was something more than silver and gold. Can you tell your neighbor that? Tabernacle kings and priests, the crowning of a nation. This part one is called the Shulchan king, the table king. I don't think you guys are ready for this. This is the table king. This is something way beyond our comprehension. There's not a government on this planet that could stand in equality with the table king, the Shulchan king. Nobody, nothing, no sickness, no disease, no demonic entity, no war, no world war, no global war, no intergalactic war could stand parallel to the, to the power of the Shulchan king that has given his people the bread of heaven, the sustaining, expanding, enduring power to fulfill the very word that he has sown and woven into our lives. Nothing and nobody. Hallelujah. I can preach to myself. Believe me, I really can. This crown table is the table of one of us. Man has become as one of us. This is the table where we become as one of us, one of him. The Mashiach said this, eat this bread. May I be in you and you be in me even as I am in my Father. This table is more than a table, Pastor Dave. This table, BJ, is more than just a table in your, in your dining area. This table is a table of eternity. This crown table is the table of one of us. This crown table is the table of our image and our likeness. I'm going somewhere. This table is the crown table of faith of belief, sustaining belief in what he has promised to do in your life and in my life. I had mentioned the other time I give a, an introduction on the three crowned vessels. Remember each one of these, the Ark of the Covenant, the Altar of Incense, and the Table of Showbread are all called Nazarenes. Did you hear what I said? They're all called set-apart ones. You have one that represents the totality of the king. That's what we're talking about today. You have the other one that represents the totality of our Kohen Hagadol, our high priest who defeated Satan as Shittim would. He defeated the enemy in the flesh of a man. He defeated in his incorruptible body the enemy as mere shittim wood, incorruptible wood that can grow in the most dead places. We're not into rolling stones away anymore. We sang the song, but the Mashiach rolled the stone away so we can dis uh, transcend through the veil of his finished work. I don't think we're hearing that. He rolled the, he caused the stone of opposition to be rolled away. The very stone that the enemy says, if you be the son of Elohim, cause this stone to turn the bread. The Mashiach says, man shall not live by manipulation. Man shall not live by physical things alone. Man shall not live by bread, by, by the, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Most High. Mashiach rolled the manipulative stone of the enemy away so that he can give us his finished work to transcend through the veil of his flesh. He says, this flesh, no tomb can hold back. This flesh, death cannot grip and hold down like your body and mine to where it decays. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? He said in Matthew chapter 6 or John chapter 6, he said that my flesh that I give you is the flesh that came from heaven. 
The flesh of the Mashiach is the bread of heaven. The flesh of the Mashiach is the healing for the children that have been begging for crumbs. I hope you're listening to me. Aron Mizbeach Ketoret HaShulchan Lechem Panim. The ark, the altar of incense, and the table of face bread. Lechem Panim. The Father says, I'm only going to give my nation and my body 12 faces of my authority. 12 revelations to sustain them as my kingdom. You could ask any sage and any rabbi. The sacred name of yod heh vav -Heh has 12 permutations. Each one of those formations of his kadosh name, his holy name, is sealed and imprinted on each one of the bread loaves that were on the table of showbread. He placed a certain type of authority for you and for myself, for each one of the tribes of Israel. I truly believe that we're in a season where the Father is unifying the body of Messiah in the midst of adversity, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of constriction. They want to constrict your breathing, but the Father says, you can't constrict the breath of life you can't hold back the breath of life the breath of life is the is the shofar of my of my good news of my gospel of my message the breath of life cannot be constricted it is time that the body of Mashiach, and I'm just going to say this. I don't know why I'm saying it, but I'm being obedient. That we peel back the layers of racial walls. And I'm not trying to get political. I'm speaking kingdom business right now. That we peel back the color of skin. That we peel back the racial upbringing. That we peel back the, the walls that have kept the nations separated. That have kept the nation of Israel entrapped in other countries and nations looking like something on the outside, it is time that the racial barriers come crumbling down and the one new man, the one spirit, the one spirit, the one body, the one face, the one faith, the one Lord, the one God, I'm speaking to everyone, the one Yahweh, the one body that sits below the head called Mashiach, come together. I'm calling to you, Joseph. As I mentioned the other week, there's so many number connections in here. When you gather these three kings and priests of the tabernacle, the Mishkan, the Mishkan in Hebrew comes from the word Shakan, which means the, the abiding presence. The Father says, my presence is just waiting for you. My presence has always been in exile. But stop embracing the exile like if it's a trip to the mall. Reject the exile for the sake of unification in the body in these times. Why? There are entities gathering in the face of the most superpower on this planet called Israel. There are entities that are gathering against the nation, the body of Mashiach, and we have been so fearful, and I'm speaking in general. It is time not that we go and command a physical warfare against the people or the nations or the governments. It is time that we bring to the knees those things that have raised themselves up against the knowledge of Mashiach and bring them under subjection and submission and unify as the body of Messiah. The or Remember, every Hebrew letter has a numerical connection, an ordinal value number to it. The entire revelation in name of the Ark of the Covenant, the altar of incense, the table of face bread, or the table of show bread is equivalent to our righteous king, Melech Sadiq. How can we go and just pretend like that doesn't exist? The Mashiach gave us a model prayer. And I think everyone knows it. It's not the prayer he had to pray. It's a model prayer. The Our Father, the Avinu prayer. 
the Our Father. You know where Abba dwells. Abba does not, remember, I want to try to say this without confusing anybody. The aspect of Abba has always been in the holy place. The aspect of Abba, Father, has always been in the Kadosh place. In the holy place. Why? Because it's in the holy place that the seed of Abba brings forth the one new man that experiences the light of the menorah. That experiences the table of showbread and all 12 revelations that make up the 12 main points of a physical body. The name of God, if I can say that's not to be argued about, it is to be proclaimed without words. It's to be proclaimed in authority. And the seed of Abba causes that one who has experienced the menorah light of revelation and the table of showbread to be able to transition through the priesthood of the altar of incense, through the veils, through the highest heavens. When Mashiach ascended up on high, he broke through the first heavens, went through this this, this rakia called space, this firmament, past the universe and threw into the highest heavens and went to that very altar in the heavenlies and sat at the right hand of power on high. He is alive and speaking for us because he is the apostle of our confession. Matthew 6. Verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray. This is our master speaking. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy be your name. Heaven is symbolic of the holy place where the altar of incense is, the menorah, and the table of showbread is. And where kingdom provision is for the people. Verse 10, your kingdom come and your will be done in earth as it is in the holy place. Look to your neighbor and say, heaven, this heaven is the holy place. Say it like you believe it. This heaven is a holy place. Where do you think you have a spiritual seat at? It's on the master's table of showbread. I have prepared a place for you to sit. I placed a table that's facing what? Facing your enemy that tried to ascend up to the north. In the congregation of the righteous ones. We, I'm telling you guys, we are the most powerful people in the universe. The nation, and I'm not talking about a state of Israel. Where ra rabbinic Judaism is not working. I'm not talking about a Christian church where Christianity just seems not to be working. I'm talking about a spiritual power in the, in the bodies of a nation called Israel. That is global. Note the word kingdom. Heaven and bread are all interlocked in the beginning part of this prayer. Abba is the source of the kingdom. The bread is the sustaining power of the sun that's in our lives and all that he represents. Give us this day. Look to your neighbor and say, I need this today. I need this bread right now. I need some strength in my life right now. I need some encouragement right now. Pastors, servants of the kingdom, whoever you are, you just, I've talked to some of you already and some of you have been in tears. You just need a pick me up. And the father says, Who told you to leave the table? Come here, son. Come here, daughter. Sit at this table and eat of the bread of heaven. We don't need yesterday's stale bread. But we need today's bread. We need fresh bread this day. This day. Give us our daily bread. Notice he says, you have got to eat this bread from the table every single day. Not the bread that is leavened with the world. But the bread that is leavened with heaven. That means the table of showbread in the holy place was leavened with every... Listen to what I'm about to say. This is so powerful. The table of showbread bread was leavened with everything the menorah represented. The table of showbread, when it came from the outside in, 
It was unleavened. It was flat. They brought it into the holy place and it expanded before the priests. It absorbed the entire atmosphere of the holy place. It is the season where the body of Mashiach, you've heard this in Christianity, the holy place is 2,000 cubits. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus Christ was crucified. I, there's a truth to that. But when are we going to start expanding now everything in the holy place? Because the enemy's laughing. But it's time that our joy begin to make a noise. It's time that we begin to make a specific sound in the face of the enemy. This bread is leavened with heaven and unleavened with deceit. Zephaniah 1.9 And I shall punish on that day all who leap over the threshold. You cannot just barge your way into the holy place. You have to be born in it. You have to be born in it. You must be born again. The Mashiach was teaching us something. He came to infuse the kingdom, like Dr. Miles Monroe said, to colonize the earth with the kingdom. You have to be born into the holy place. That means you have to die to yourself at the altar. And you have to transition through that laver and be clothed with the garments of born again in order to enter into this place. And I shall punish on that day all who leap over the threshold, who fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. The Shulchan bread is the king that destroys the enemy, which is called disunity. The enemy of unity, the shulchan table bread, that bread was perfectly in order with specific bowls. They weren't bowls, they were golden pipes. Pipes that kept the bread fresh, that caused it to be elevated. Abba's, what he's waking up, the nine fruit of the Spirit. He's waking up the nine gifts of the Spirit of the Ruach HaKodesh. He's brought revelational truth of the five books of the Torah, which the heartbeat of those five books is called covenant relationship. And he's brought the fivefold ministry, waking them up. He is about to infuse all these into one table of showbread in which his Spirit blows through to inflate the bread. Cause it to rise up. That's the rapture we're looking for, to be caught up as an expanding bread while we're on the earth. <laughs> Proverbs 20, 17. Bread gained by deceit might be sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth is filled with gravel. Powerful, powerful. Matthew 15, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts, we need to start spending some time in the life of Mashiach. Start looking everywhere he went, everyone he spoke to and didn't speak to. Why did he not speak to this one and speak to that one? Why did he not say a word and the disciples go and step out of line and out of order before their season and start to talk as if someone was speaking to them? We get a lot of that in the assemblies today. Just because it seems to be silent for a season does not mean the master's not talking. Just because it seems silent does not mean that our king is not speaking. Why don't you sit, be quiet, and be still via Shev right before his feet so you can hear what the Ruach is saying beyond the noise of your own mouth. And cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, Master Ben David, son of David. She was pulling on his kingdom. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Back then, when the Mashiach came in on the scene, even children were demon-possessed. Even demons, they raided the whole place, and there wasn't a king around that could extend a scepter of freedom. There wasn't a priest around that was able to administer heaven's voice to set them free. But guess what? There was a king that just happened to be walking here at this moment. There was a Kohen Haggadol, a high priest about to do something that no one ever seen before. The kingdom bread came to bring deliverance. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him saying, send her away. 
for she cries after us. They assumed that she was crying for them. She wasn't crying for them. And that's the problem today. People will jump out of the table and go and try to save the world thinking the people are crying for them. They ain't crying for you. They're crying for him. Don't leave before your time. They, they assumed that she wanted their attention, but she came to the master's table for the healing of a generation vexed with the leaven of hell. But he answered her and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He wasn't rejecting her. He was giving her a clue, a key to unlock. The lost sheep of Israel, also known as the Gentiles, who must eat from the Shulchan king himself so that the the, the veneer of Gentile will be peeled away and they'll put on their royal garment called Israel. Then came she and worshipped him saying, Master, help me. Worship. Listen to me. Look to your neighbor and say worship. Worship. Only one or two of you. I am so shocked. Are you kidding me? How many worshipers are in the house? Okay. Someone look at your neighbor and say, worship releases the ingredients of healing and wholeness. Worship releases the ingredients of healing and wholeness. But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread, say children's bread, and cast it to the dogs. Healing is the children's bread. I want you to receive that right here, right now. Say, healing is my bread. And she said, true. You know what? If we were in Africa, they'd be eating this word up right now because they, they, they have this faith that America, and I'm not trying to down talk anybody, but here in America, we are so darn spoiled. You know what my prayer is? Abba, call Cause a famine to hit this land. Re remove everything from this land, which is probably going to happen. And cause your people to cry out to you again. Because the book of Amos, the prophet Amos says that there will not be a famine of food and water and materialism, but a famine of the word of the Most High. May we be hungry for his word. Because his word, when it's digested and eaten, it will separate between the goats and the sheep. It will separate between the wheat and the tares. We're coming to a powerful season that we need to be excited about, not afraid of. We need to rejoice because of what's coming. Because promises from his table in the midst of famine and destruction are going to be the dainties of his people. And she said, truth, master, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Yeshua answered and said unto her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you even as you will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Healing is sped up as we come to the Shulchan king's table. And this woman, there's a strong possibility. There were two men that went into the promised land along with the other ten that came back with a good report. Why? They ate from the master's table. It was called Yahoshua, Joshua, and Caleb. Caleb. Caleb is also the Hebrew word for a dog. Caleb was grafted into the tribe of Judah. He wasn't even homeborn, supposedly. So there's a strong belief that this woman was a, dis and I've said this before, was a descendant of Caleb that was awaiting the master's table to be set in the face of the enemies of Israel. She was right there saying, in a sense, my father Caleb told us about your coming. He saw the promise in the land which was you. And we've been eating the crumbs from the table while others been rejecting your promises. So let's give a little historical informational thing about the Shulchan table in Exodus 37.10. I don't know how far I'm going to get. I think something's going to happen today. Are you guys ready? When I get up here, it's business. I'm not here to play games. I'm here to proclaim his truth. 
I am here to bring the sword of the Spirit to pierce past all the baloney and nonsense. I came to bring the Bessorah, the good news of the, the gospel of the kingdom, because someone needs to hear it. And he made the table of shittim wood. Two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold and made thereunto a crown of gold round about. And he made thereunto a border of a handbreadth round about and made a crown of gold for the border. Therefore round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold. There's so much in here, my goodness. And he put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. See, this is a standing table, Pastor Dave. This is a standing table, Rochelle. This is a standing table, Zena. This is a table that stands for you when you feel like you can't, brothers and sisters. This is a table that says, when you feel weak, I'm strong. When you feel like giving up, the bread is already set before you. All you have to do is sit. You don't have to stand. What sit? You're sitting in my finished work. There's nothing you can do in your own power. Only what I have done overpowers what seems to be impossible. That might be a prophetic word for someone. I don't know. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves. Say, the places for the staves. To bear the table, and he made the staves of shatim wood, and overlaid them with gold. Excuse me, I gotta get some water, because this is about to get good. This is not water; this is fuel. That's it. We're filled up. <clears throat> Where was I at? What verse was I on? To bear the table, and he made the vessels which were upon the table his dishes his spoons, his bowls, his covers, to cover with all. And here's a nugget for you guys. This is too long to get into it. Those four aspects also reveal the revelation of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Each one of those items for the table of showbread are those uh, disciples that came to bring a certain revelation of Mashiach that we see at this table. That's just some side homework if you want to go dig it out. The bowls and the covers... <clears throat> are also Hebrew terms used for prophetic functioning. Something that we've seen in the book of Acts chapter 2. But we now come to the first vessel or the first crowned king of the tabernacle, Shulchan. If we enter from the outside in, and this is the way of our approach. You guys know the basics of the tabernacle revelation. Round, rectangle, I don't even care anymore. I'm just after his presence that filled that thing up. I don't know if you heard what I said. I'm after his presence that filled that thing up. You could have the round, the rectangular. You could have the shape. I want the presence that cannot be seen with the natural eye. I want, that's what we need. We have a lot of things being built today physically that people are running to. And guess what? The presence wants nothing to do with that. The holy place or sanctuary is where royal priestly operations took place and take place. Only priests and kings have access to this sacred space and this sacred place. But I find it interesting, this verse, we've heard it many times through Pastor Dave, Sister Brittany, and myself up here. An interesting verse connected to the construction of the tabernacle. Ve'asuli mikdash ve'shakanti betokam, and from or and form to me a sanctuary that I may shkina inside of them. He's always desired a dwelling place with us. Mikdash means sanctuary. He never desired to dwell in the dimension of the outer court. He never desired. That's why he said, "Make for me a mikdash, a sanctuary." Oh yeah, don't forget, because of the fall of man, the outer court, that a past. I've always desired a holy place. I've never desired an outer court. He never desired us to live in a natural world like this. He desired us to live in a sanctuary where everything is breathing, 
where everything is alive, where everything never dies. It is always living and moving and having its being in him. But let's look at something. There's so much we can get into that with. But we're going to look at the staves or the poles, the places for the staves. This can actually be read. It's in Hebrew, batim labadim, which means the houses of the garments, the houses and the garments, the staves that carried the shulchan table were those who had houses prepared for them and garments prepared for them. The staves physically were carried by Levitical priests back then. The shulchan table of the master is carried by those who have the garments of praise, the garments of beauty, the garments of worship, the garments of salvation, the garments of de deliverance. The shulchan or table of bread, also known as lechem panim, the bread of faces. Panim means faces. Lechem can also be pronounced as lachem. Say lachem, which means to do battle. You see, when, oh man, when we sit at the shulchan table and we partake of that, we don't have to be exhausted trying to go out and just, just hear me out and try to combat what the enemy has conjured up that burns you out and causes you to be strifeful with each other, picketing over something that is conjured up. The Father says, sit at my table. The battle's not yours. It's not against flesh and blood. It's not against the police. It's not against the rioters. It's not against the looters. It's not against any physical entity. There is a battle in the spirit realm, and it is time that the people of Abba get to their knees and begin to battle through tefillah, prayer. The very essence that made up Adam. But why the strange title for a table that contained 12 loaves of bread? Why this strange title? All of this. And we'll look at that in a second. But as we enter this revelation and this prophetic insight, there's so much with this table. This mystery and deep level that gives life to all prophecy. We now come to the table of expansion. I said this before. Or the crown king. The Nazarene table. This is deep stuff. It's the Nazarene table. Twelve loaves. Twelve tribes. And twelve revelations of the sacred name that we are too ignorant, if I could say that, to comprehend in our life. Remember, the Mashiach says this, I am he who comes crowned with heaven's glory. I am he who comes crowned as high priest after the order of Melech Sadiq. I am he who comes as the crowned one with the bread of many faces. He established his royal dominion by bringing the face of time and suspending it, healing blind eyes, healing deaf ears. I'm talking about the things that came from his table. Healing the lame. The dead were raised. The mentally challenged were healed. Demon-possessed people were delivered. You've never seen this before. Lepers were cleansed, multiplying the little to more than enough, feeding thousands at a time with two fish and five loaves, walking on water, listen, calming the storms of life, dismantling Satan's armory, dismantling Satan's armory, dismantling Satan's armory, calling Lazarus forth from the bosom of the righteous resting place. What was he doing? When he calls, listen, when he calls you from a place, he's bankrupting that place. When he calls you into healing, he's bankrupting sickness in your life. When he's calling you out of poverty, he's bankrupting poverty to give you all that you need. 
When he's calling you out of being in a place of ignorance, he's bankrupting that place to give you his wisdom. You put a title to that. There's so many. He came to bankrupt the enemy's arsenal. He came walking out of the tomb. He came ascending on high. And all these are revelations of the bread on the crown table of expansion. Let's look at the word for this table. It's called ha shulchan. Say ha shulchan. It comes from the word shalach, which means to send, which means to stretch out, which also is a representation of the pool of Siloam or the pool of shalach, the sent one. You see, I'm, oh my goodness, you have to stir up the Mashiach. You have to stir him up in your own life. You have to get his attention. You have to stir up the waters of Mashiach for your own life. You have to make the time to get your butt down to that pool of Siloam for yourself. I hope I didn't offend anybody. Because there's a whole lot of big butts in the community. But this, but that, all these excuses, but, but, but I don't, but my father, but my mother, but, but my, but, but nothing. Get to the pool of the shalach one, the sent one. I knew I'd save myself out of that one. So I had to stir up the waters of salvation. <laughs> Man. <clears throat> so we can say that this table is the apostolic table. The table that is anointed to send out the king's decree. To send out the lamb whom we inherit. Do you know that you inherit the lamb of Elohim slain before the foundation of the earth? Did you know that? Yes, you did. I did too. It's powerful. To send out the king's authority. To send out the expanding and building authority. This table is more than just the table under the order of Melech Sadiq. This table reveals the expanding royal bloodline of Yeshua HaMashiach that has no earthly father, no earthly mother, no Adamic right to Satan, no dust connection for the Nachash to devour. This crown table holds the key to everlasting life. The sanctuary is the place of everlasting life. There's life outside, the redeemed life outside, everlasting life in the holy place and eternal life in the most holy place. It's the place where breathing is touched and never constricted. The place where everything is sustained by light. I'm talking about the holy place inside where the shulchan table is. The shulchan, the table of showbread was leavened with everything in there. There's some writings in the sages saying when the Shekinah hit the tabernacle, the glory, they heard the wings of the cherubim moving. These were just art of, these were vessels they formed through Betzalel. It's everything came to life. You see, when we come to stir up the waters of Mashiach, he will bring to life, I promise you, because his word is true. He will bring to life the most deadest situation, no matter how dead it looks. I believe it, and I know it. This table contains healing. And here's a side note. Healing, as we see in Revelation 22, verse 2, goes back to the garden when Adam was to do what? Till the ground. Till is the word ebed. It means to serve in its simplest form. But service to Abba brings healing to a sick and dying world. Adam's responsibility was to bring the remedy 
on this planet. You know what the remedy was? Sons and daughters after the kingdom. He was to till the ground and say, hold on, you geva, you goof, you body. In Hebrew, there's different words for body. You have to stand still as me and my wife build you up and blow inside of you the breath of life also. Sons and daughters, listen to your fathers and mothers that are trying to walk to the best of their ability after righteousness. It is our responsibility to bring to you the breath of life because you are the remedy in this season. <clears throat> Service to Abba brings healing to a sick and decaying planet. This world, if you look around, we need healing. When the body of Mashiach is unified and begins to serve the king really in unity, there will be a transition take place. Healing will take place to the cancerous outburst happening all over this planet. This table, when read, when you look at Shulchan and you just read it the other way in Hebrew, it's Nachal Se, which means to inherit the lamb. The Shulchan table read the other way is Nachal Se. I make it personal. I inherit the lamb. My goodness. We inherit all that the lamb came to give, who is the bread, who is the crown king of the table. The lamb redeems. Listen. The lamb heals. The lamb restores. The lamb delivers. The lamb empowers. The lamb regenerates. The lamb lifts up. We just sang a song. The lamb draws near those who are afar off. The lamb defeats death, hell, and the grave. The lamb defends the weak and the rejected. The lamb forgives. The lamb opens what no man can shut and shuts what no man can open. Behold, John, don't cry. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb, he is found worthy to open up the seals. The lamb will open up that which seems to be locked from generation to generation. He can break the seals. The Lamb crowns His Abba's name upon us. I want to make this declaration. We are crowned with the sacred name of He who lives, who was, and who ever will be. The name that is made of those letters, yod heh vav -Heh. We are crowned and sealed with the name above all names. John 129 and verse 36. On the next day, Yohanan saw Yeshua coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of Elohim who takes away the sin of the world. What a Levitical proclamation that just shut down that whole priesthood at that time. John 136, and looking at Yeshua walking, he said, Behold the Lamb of Elohim. 1 Peter 1.18, knowing that you were redeemed from your futile way of life, inherited from your fathers, earthly fathers, not with what is corruptible like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Mashiach as the lamb, unblemished and spotless. Revelation, I read this already. And behold, chapter 5, verse 6, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood the lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim, Isaiah 11, verse 1 through 3, sent forth into all the earth upon all seven major continents. No coincidence, huh? Revelation 5, 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb. Can you guys say that? Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, to receive riches, to receive wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such that are in the sea and all that are in them heard, I say blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever and ever and ever. 
And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped that lives forever and ever and ever. Where the sound of kadosh, kadosh, kadosh from the seraphim, the fiery ones are constantly going on. In scripture, there's twelves all over the place. The twelve pieces, the loaves of bread on the table. The twelve sons of Israel. The twelve apostles. Ishmael begot twelve princes. Solomon's twelve specific officers, first kings. Twelve stones placed in the Jordan River, plus twelve more stones on the other side, Joshua chapter 4. This Jordan stood as the crossing point of the past to the airship, the promised heirloom. Listen to me. The heirloom that we inherit from Mashiach is called Yerusha, a family word of Yerushalayim. Yerusha is the Hebrew word for an heirloom or an inheritance or one who is the heir of an entire gift. Twelve stones in the priestly plate, uh, breastplate. Twelve wa wells of water at a place called Elim. And you can Google these things. Twelve stones at the altar of Elijah. Twelve legions of Malachim warriors that the Mashiach said in Matthew 26 he could have called down. Twelve years of an issue of blood that was dried up. Yeshua was twelve years old and confounded the most wisest Torah teachers of his time. Twelve star stars in the crown of the woman in Revelation 12. The description of the new Jerusalem. Revelation, 12 gates, 12 angels, 12 apostles, 12 pearls, 12 stones, 12 foundations, 12,000 furlongs. Go do that math. The wall was 144 cubits, 12 times 12. 12 kinds of fruit that the tree of life produces in Revelation 22. 12 captains in 1 Chronicles 27. 12 celestial bodies, 12 permutations of the divine name, and it can probably go on and on. I don't want to bore you guys. But back to the table. When looking at this revelation just in the name, we can see that the Mashiach came to infuse the nation with the leaven of the kingdom. He came to infuse the nation with the leaven of his kingship and the leaven of his priesthood. He came to till the ground. He came to serve his body. Tilling is also healing. Leaven is not a bad thing. Listen to me. Leaven is not a bad thing when it is a kingdom leaven of Mashiach. Matthew 13, 33. Another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until all was leaven. You know what the problem is today? People don't really love Abba. They don't love I, I, I thank all you guys that are here and those that are watching and those that will be returning in your own time, right? But there's those out there that should be here and should be in certain congregations and they're not. They're showing that they really don't love because they're not patient. Patient is the first characteristic, as I've said before, of true love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not puff up. Love does not try to become its own bread before it's it's, it's refining season. In Greek, leaven is zume, which means to cause, to rise, to expand. Leaven is the king's ingredient and the secret of expansion. Zume comes from the Hebrew word seor. In Exodus 12, 15, listen to this. In regards to the week of unleavened bread and, and Pesach, Passover. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off. Very strong language, right? But this is talking about something totally different because there's two Hebrew words for the unleavened bread and leaven in this section. Why such strong language? Because the houses... Listen, the houses at that time, proof is in the pudding, had the leaven of Mitzrayim in them. 
the houses of the Israelites had residue of Egypt in them. How do we know that? Because there were many that said, oh, I wish we were back in Egypt. They brought the leaven out into the desert with them. We have to remove the leaven out of our life before the Father even desires to dwell with you and I, right? He wanted all worldly influence out of the home. He wanted the people to make room for the Lamb. Listen to this. The removal of worldly leaven makes room for the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth in the world. The Shulchan table was saying this very thing. Leaven makes room for the Lamb. The Shulchan table says, I have made room for the Lamb. Can we say that? Have we made room for the Lamb? The proof is in the type of bread that is in your life. Is it the bread of Pharisees or is it the bread of righteousness? The phrase that we read in Exodus 12, put away leaven, is the Hebrew phrase Shabbat Seor. Shabbat is more than just one day. Shabbat, it's the dimension that is to leaven the other six days of the week. The Sabbath is the place and space made available for His presence. When we bring the essence of Shabbat to all that is around us, then we have embraced the rest that Hebrews says that remains for the people of Yah Himself. Hallelujah. So I want to move ahead. <clears throat> well, i got plenty of time. In Genesis 3.22, we have a very unique phrase due to Adam eating the forbidden fruit. And Yorhevav He Elohim said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. Vayomer Yahweh Elohim chen hadam haya ke'achad mimenu. So this could be seen as something like this. So something caused the Adam to become as a specific appointed one. Ke'achad. Someone that was appointed. Some, Adam had become something before his time and did not know how to balance it out. So when we partake of the shulkan table of faces, we eat of the bread. Adam ate of the tree and became as something. When we eat of the bread, we become as the appointed one, the united one, the bread man from heaven himself. The crown king who expands his influence in us. This shulkan table, this shulkan speaks of the kingdom order. Twelve loaves were in order. The shulkan speaks of the order of the righteous king. You know what? We talk about this all the time. And no offense directed to, towards any one ministry or any one man or any one woman. There is so much discord in the Hebrew roots. We think, we think that the Hebrew roots and Messianic roots think that they have arrived. And I say that in general. We got all the right garb. We're doing all the right thing. But if the, imagine if Mashiach was here. He'd just close his nose. He'd be like, oh my gosh, you guys look good. You look good. But you are filled with dead men's bones. There's so much disunity. No one wants to submit to the divine order that is given to the body. Everyone wants to be above the next one. And you know what it is? It's like, hey, I'm just going to sit back here. Abba, have all of them. What do you want me to do? Shittim wood is atse shittim, incorruptible, dried out wood. It speaks of the flesh of the Mashiach, which he defeated the enemy with. The word is inside. Listen, this table of showbread was made of shittim wood. So the, the wood contained the word. The word was inside the wood. The word was in, the word gave life to the wood. So the word gives life to the tree the life comes from the wood why because the word is in it if the word's not in it there's no life in it 
If the word is not in it, and I'm just speaking broad right now. This is a broad brush stroke right now. If his word is not in it, there's no life in it. The scripture gives an, an interesting Hebrew word. It talks about the length thereof. Orech. Say orech. This word speaks of an order. As in the order of, of our righteous king, our Melech Sadiq. Embedded inside the measurements. Embedded inside the materials. The vessels themselves were the hidden truths of our righteous king himself. The table of showbread is called what? The Shulchan Lechem Panim. It is also the altar of our Melech Sadiq, our righteous king. We are focused on what? The kingship and the priesthood of our Mashiach. The 12 loaves of bread represent the 12 tribes in a simple manner. 12 levels of healing. And this lechem or this bread or this expansion element is the influence of heaven's bread inside the 12 tribes of Israel who hold the key to unlocking the leavening power of the bread. How do we know that? The Messiah said the kingdom is not in what you see. The kingdom is inside of you. He's saying I came as the starting mass of leaven and I came to my own to infuse the nation with the leaven of heaven. What is the expanding order of the king's table? It's to push out what's not of him to make room for his presence. So we're studying this right now. Why? Because the next the next vessel we look at is the crowned high priest called the altar of incense. We won't get it unless we embrace the expanding power that pushes out everything of the world. Pushes all that out and makes room for his presence. The heaviest thing in the holy place, Pastor Dave, was not the menorah. The heaviest thing in the holy place was the bread, the lechem bread. Why? Because then it brought us to the matchless weight of the incense. But that's for, for the next time we come together. I'm, all, I'm almost done. I got 31 minutes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the leavening agent is what expands. It, pu it pushes out. It presses the boundaries like a child in the womb of the mother. It pushes the womb. It starts to prepare the crowning. It prepares that you see the crown was set on the shulkan table prepared for the 12 loaves. The father says the table that I set before you in the presence of my enemy contains a crown waiting for you. There's a crown. We have a crown. We got to get this in our mind. Our mind has to change. To, we need to be transformed by what? The renewing of our mind. We've got to think like kings. We've got to think like priests. There's only one Kohen Haggadol. Don't get me wrong. I've been accused of, of making a false statement that I never said that everyone's a high priest. That is a lie from the pit of hell. We got one Kohen Haggadol, one high priest who is Yeshua HaMashiach. And we are kings and priests under his order. Period. <clears throat> In Matthew 15, verse 21. Then Yeshua went there and departed into the coast of Tyre. Sound familiar? The coast of Tyre. Remember the king and the prince of Tyre in Isaiah? Who had taken this counsel, Isaiah 23, 8. Taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning. Listen to what Isaiah 23, verse 8 says. Who has taken this counsel against Tyre? The crowning city whose merchants are princes, whose traffickers are the honorable of the earth. And it shall come to pass, verse 15, in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten for 70 years according to the days of the one king. After the end of 70 years shall Tyre sing as a harlot. Note the crown opposition of 
Atar and Nazir. It's two different crowns. This crown dealing with the king of Tyre is a crown called Atar. It's a distorted crown. It's related to this coronavirus nonsense only to usher in what is a possible antichrist, John the Third, that's debunking the Queen of England right now who they have claiming to be the king of Canada, the king of North America, the king of Europe, the king of China, the king of Africa, the king of the earth, and they were interviewing him. There is something going on that is containing a crown called Atar. But I'm telling you right now, there is one. I keep saying this. There is only one. The Nazarene. The Nazir, the crowned Shulchan king, the table king. The table king is coming to set everything in order, you guys. We're not worried about what China's just recently done under our nose. There was what? This coronavirus the pandemic. It was a plan. They planned this whole baloney. No one, I'm, not, I'm not covering my mouth to restrict my breathing. There's those that want to do that. Okay, there's people that are going to hook you up. Go ahead. You want that? Here you go. But there was that pandemic with the coronavirus. The, riot, the riots all started, and no one's talking about that virus. Why? Because they're back here, and I'm going to say it publicly. I don't even care anymore. They were back here contacting and creating jobless situations so that people say, I'll get hired for 19 bucks an hour to be a snitch. Here, here, hire me to be a contact tracer to tell on my people. Keep your, keep your contact tracing flaws. You can keep all that stuff. We're going to stay here at the table. Well, all of this has been going on. What was going on? China came into Canada recently and took over some indigenous tribal areas. China is looking to foreclose on the United States Corporation. I'm going public. China's looking to foreclose on this country. You guys, I don't know if you knew that. This is real stuff. China's been laughing at America saying, you guys are only 200 and something years old. We've been around for thousands of years. Who are you fooling? There is a global warfare going on in the spirit realm. And it is time that Joseph stand up and say, pharaohs of the, of the nation, of the world. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous kings and priests of the table and of the incense altar. You guys didn't know I was going that direction. Neither did I. I didn't plan on doing that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to this. No, I'm going to skip that. Remember the lady, the Canaanite woman, she comes and the crumbs from the table. She's eating a possible connection to the lineage of Caleb. That means she was from because of engrafting. She was a sister to Mashiach. She was also from the tribe of Judah that the Mashiach came through. He was looking at her sister. He comes, the Mashiach comes to heal the family discord on the planet. That's the whole Melech Sadiq order thing back in Genesis 14. What does he do? He comes to bring peace between kings. It was five kings that Abraham came to battle against. And he said there's two elements of the priestly order that can only bring peace. The bread and the wine. The broken body of Mashiach and the shed blood is the only remedy for this corrupted world. It's the only remedy for this corrupted world. The only remedy. If Buddha was alive, he'd say, forgive me, please. I'm not a god. There's your god. If all these other gurus that have died, they would all point to the Mashiach saying, we've seen him go into the depths and corridors of the spirit realm. And we've seen things. This is your king. This is your god. This is your Elohim. This is your yod heh vav -Heh. This is the only one. We were frauds. We made gods of gold and silver and wood and stone that could never speak to you guys. They couldn't breathe. But the giver of life, the one who breathed into the first Adam, that is your Elohim. They would say that. So after the Mashiach, after the Mashiach gives this powerful revelation of this woman, this woman unlocked the key of David. 
She unlocked something through belief. She unlocked a whole healing for a generational line. The demon that vexed her daughter was about to take control of a whole family line that would have corrupted the tribe of Judah. And the Mashiach says, that's as far as you're going. We're going to sever that right now because I came to heal the tribes. I came to bring unity in the wayward. So what happens after this? Yeshua goes on a rampage. He went on a rampage because the next verses say this. Matthew 15, same chapter, verse 29. And Yeshua departed from thence. If you look at the tense of this, he went, more, he went quick. It's like he was strolling through Jerusalem. And the lady came. He took his time. After that, he picked up the pace. He was, he was angry. <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. <clears throat> and Yeshua departed from there and came near unto the Sea of Galilee. Why Galilee? That's where the exile originated. And if you do your homework, there's a certain type of demonic entity connected to that region. There's something there in the Galilee. And he went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame. Listen, they came to sit at the table on the mountain. They sat at the table of the bread of life. The Mashiach focused so much on bread, bread, bread. I am the bread. I am the bread. I am the bread that the fathers ate the man in the wilderness and died. I am the bread which came down from heaven. The flesh that I give you is the bread that has come down from the heavens. He's saying my body's not natural. It is ordained and born out of adversity through the canals and the umbilical cord birth canal from heaven to earth. The sulam is a, is a revelation. Philippians chapter 2, the seven-tier sulam is what he came here to go back up. So look what happens. He brought the, the lame came. The blind, the dumb, the maimed, and many others. There's so many. He says we can't even record the types of th people, the types of inflictions. And he cast them down at Yeshua's feet, and he healed them all. I'm telling you, there's, there's something coming. This whole, all this stuff happening, when the king comes, all will be healed. When the king comes, there will not be lack of anything in the body of Mashiach. Nothing. And so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak and the maimed to be whole. I can preach right here a whole sermon, but I'm not. The lame to walk and the blind to see, and they glorified the Elohim of Yisrael. Powerful. <clears throat> There's a kingdom connection of faith here with this woman and the crumbs. And she says that the dogs have been eating these. As the dogs referred to here are the descendants of Caleb, whose name can mean dog. There was the generational faith for coming, for the coming of the bread of heaven that the family line of Caleb waited for. This woman spoke of a crumb falling from the table, but not hitting the ground. Oh my goodness, that's deep stuff from the, from the word. Crumbs fell from the table. There's no record of them hitting the ground. Why? Because the dust of the ground, the enemy could have gobbled those up, those generations, and wound up creating clones of some type, like in Genesis 6. But there was a nation through, a, a tribe called Judah, through Caleb, that preserved the bread, the essence, the crumbs of the master's table. They would not let the prophecies hit the ground. They would not let the prophecies fall by the wayside. They would not let the prophecies of the coming bread man of heaven fall in the thorns and the thistles. They would not let the order of the bread of heaven fall to that ground. They ate from the crumbs or the glimpses of the bread of heaven over the centuries. This woman was waiting and we must ask a question. How come no one else is recorded as, as to seeing her at the bottom of the table? Notice Matthew, Mark, and Luke speak of the crumbs, but John speaks of the bread himself who came from heaven with healing in his wings. John gives another side of the revelation of this table that connects us to the Shulchan table 
of kingdom expansion. Uh, I want to just say this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prophesy something right now. I prophesy today that no longer will you eat the crumbs of generational iniquity and generational curses passed down from father to son and father to son. Those are severed. There's no room for generational iniquities in the kingdom bread of the table. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. We uproot the altars and the rituals that have become the relics in families, giving us the crumbs of generational pasts and faces of rebellion. We eat from the kingdom bread of the new covenant, the Melech Sadiq order and yoke of freedom found at the tabernacle king and priest altar of bread. Not freedom to live in sin, but the freedom born out of the altar of our Melech Sadiq, our righteous king, known as the tabernacle Nazir Shulchan, the tabernacle crowned king. All contracts, I want you guys to stand up. All contracts known and are unknown that are not after the order of our righteous king and his crown table of his presence are canceled now because there is no struggle at this place. I'm speaking now. I'm speaking by the Ruach HaKodesh. He gave me this. All forms and filed orders. This is a repetitive thing with additions. And filed orders of witchcraft, because that's what's been going on. And accusations against our family lines are canceled. Because there is shalom at this crown table. We stand as servants under a prophetic mantle for this moment to expose the tactics of the enemy that have been ritualized. Lift your hands up through words, through negative energy on all scales, forbidding covenants made through sex, through drugs and words and actions and intents from the generations past. We are the crown bread at this table, anointed, appointed, and chosen by the master himself. Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and give them a big high five. No wonder the revelation of Melech Sadiq has no genealogical limitation. And the access that the, de that the demonic realm has trafficked for thousands of years is never seen. This realm of the bread is our place of kingship and priesthood in our righteous king. No father, no mother, or can we say not of this natural fallen state. No earthly seed line connection that gives legal access to come through the womb of a natural mother. The order of Melech Sadiq cannot be traced to any earthly authority. It's heavenly and more powerful to the fact that Levi even tied to Melech Sadiq through Abraham. And I've said this before. There's no search engine in the realm of the Ruach HaKodesh that can trace its connection to you and I. As we come through the new covenant altar of our Melech Sadiq, this crown king and priest table set before us in the face of our enemies. Our former gene pool strings that held authority over us causing sickness and disease and every setback imaginable has now come to a halt right now because this congregation has pressed through and those who might be watching and listening are now given the revelation to access and eat from the new covenant altar of our righteous king, the Nazir Mizbeach Shulchan Panim, the Nazarene, the crown king table of his faces. You put a name to one of those faces of your need. The Nazir Mizbeach Shulchan Panim and it's interesting because this Hebrew phrase also has the numerical value connection to something else. The Melech Sadiq Mizbeach Ha Rafu Patsa. The Melech Sadiq altar brings the healing to the wound, to the bruise. We have been bruised because of the enemy. And we have been limping because of the enemy. 
But the, the table of our king has come to strengthen the area of your limp. What is your limp? It's come to get healed. Genesis 3.15. Let's look at this word for bruise. You can sit down for a second. I'm almost done. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed. We're going to see who heals the bruise. Are you ready for this? We're going to hear who comes to heal the bruise. He took the wound for us, but we are the ones that have, we've been limping because we're the body. The limpings come to an end because the Pesach has absorbed the Piseach, the limp. He's absorbed the Piseach, the limp. Pesach has absorbed the limp, and I'm going to prove it to you in a second. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The word bruise is called shuf. Say shuf. And has the same numerical connection to Yeshua. Yeshua absorbs the shuf so that we can sound the shofar of freedom and healing and strength. Satan is an enemy of this very table. And notice in Exodus 25, we go from that ark straight to the table of all things. It went from the ark, not to the veils, not to the altar of incense. It went from the ark to the table of showbread. Why the order? It went from the ark of the covenant to the table of showbread. Interesting. I don't even know how to say this. <clears throat> Yeshua defeated Satan as a shittim man, a man of wood. Shittim has the same value also as Satan, Satan. He defeated Satan on the wood. Psalm 104 says this. <clears throat> yod heh vav -He has sworn and he does not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melech Sadiq. There's a psalm, I think it's Psalm 96 verse 10. You got to do your homework to find it. It's like they removed it. But I have a copy of a picture of this thing at home. I, I was trying to find it. It's probably in a, in a flash drive of mine. Psalm 96 verse 10, you'll see it says that yod heh vav -He Elohim rules. But in the older manuscript scrolls, it says that yod heh vav -He Elohim reigns from the tree, from the wood. Elohim reigns from the wood. That's deep. That's powerful. Hebrews chapter 5. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever. Look at someone and say forever. According to the order of Melech Sadiq. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of Elohim, a high priest after the order of Melech Sadiq, all through the book of Hebrews. The change is actually, ex it's ex as I said before, it's expansive. It's an expansive change, period. Let me read from John really quick from our Mashiach, and then we're going to close. John chapter 6. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Yeshua said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. Did you hear that? You cannot find the bread from the sacrificial system of heaven. You cannot find the bread of heaven from that. We can only find it at the finished work of Mashiach. But my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of Elohim is he which came down from heaven and gives life unto the world. That's why there's, if someone says, hey, if someone religious says, you know what? Jesus, Yeshua, could not have given his life. His life is not worthy to redeem you. That's called human sacrifice. No, it's human sacrifice if he was born from the natural realm. But he is even saying, my body came from my Father in heaven. That's why it's not a human sacrifice. Oh. I'm skipping. I'm going to just give 12 points to this bread and then we're done. We are crowned. I went way ahead if I threw you guys off. 
We are crowned with redemption, Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, to walk in that redeeming power. We are crowned with health. First, third John 1, 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We are crowned with restoration, Jeremiah 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of your wounds, saith Yodhibav Yahweh. Because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeks after. He has said different. We are crowned with salvation and deliverance, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 25. Know you not that you which run in a race... Run all, but one receives the prize, so run that you may obtain. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, an atar, but we an incorruptible crown, a nazir, just like the shittim would. This spoke of the incorruptible crown of our Mashiach. We are crowned with empowerment and glory. 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, the shepherd of shepherds, the apostle of the apostles, the prophet of prophets, the king of kings, the master of masters, the great one, you shall receive the crown of glory that fades not away. We are crowned with regeneration. Regeneration is from the Latin word that means to be born again. Go look it up. Very interesting. We are crowned with the new birth as a heavenly crowning. John chapter 3. You must be born again. We are crowned with loving kindness. Psalm 103 verse 4. Who redeemed your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. We are crowned with life, James 1.12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which Yahuwah has promised to them that love him. No more earthly sandals, Moses. Moses' sandals were going to be connected to the tent of old. Our sandals that we take off, Moses had a revelation of the divine Mishkan, that we, he saw you guys. He saw me. He was taken up when that verse says, take off your sandals for the place in which you stand is holy ground. He left his body. His body stood there for four days. That's why it says his body was on the mountain for four days. We missed that in the text. Where was Moses? His body was there. His sandals were there, but he was in the spirit. It was a time warp type thing. And he saw Mashiach where? On the mountain of transfiguration with Elijah. He went up the mountain. His back was to Israel. But when we read in the New Testament, Elijah and Moses is on the mountain. And the three uh, disciples said, let us build three tabernacles. And Mashiach says, you don't even know that. He is, he is getting the revelation of the tabernacle. There's no time in eternity. He's seen the pattern. And he's going to go back over there and have it built. We are crowned with righteousness and victory. 2 Timothy 4.8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I have five minutes and I'm going to use them up. Which Yah, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day. And not to me only, but to unto all them also that love his appearing. We are crowned with beauty and glory. 1 Peter 5. The elders which are among you, I exhort, whom am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Mashiach and also a partaker of the glory that should be revealed. Feed the flock of Yodhebav Yahweh, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not, be not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy uh, lucre, but of a, re a ready mind, neither as being lords over Yah's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that does not fade away. We are crowned with a sure foundation, Mashiach, our chief cornerstone, the stone of drinking. Shetiah also means to drink, Ephesians 2.19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the Kedoshim, the set-apart ones, and of the household of, of Yahweh, and are built up upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Yeshua HaMashiach himself being the chief cornerstone, the Evan Shetiah, 
the stone of drinking. We are crowned, the last one, with the revelation of his name. Exodus 29, verse 6, And you shall put the turban upon his head, and put the holy crown upon the turban. And they made the plate of the holy crown, the nazir of gold, and wrote upon it a writing like to the engravings of a signet, a signet Kadosh le Yahuwah, holiness to the Lord, if I can say that. And John 19, 19, it says, And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, the tree. And the writing was Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Yeshua ha-Nozri ve-Melech yehudim Those four words give us the sacred name of the Most High. 1 Corinthians 10, 17, For we, being many, are one bread. Say one bread. One body partakers of one bread. Man. <clears throat> this crown table, as I said in the beginning, is the table of one of us. This crown table is the table of our image and likeness. This crown table is the table of faith. This crown table where we are recreated. This crown table is where the nation is crowned. Receive the right hand of the crowned one. Receive the right arm of the crowned Nazarene today. And grab a hold of the horns of the altar. Eat from the bread of expansion Enter into the throne room of his chambers where the weight of heaven, the crown of glory of his covenant seat speaks for you and I. And take your place of dominion over the waters of chaos and establish the Melech Sadiq himself as the crown king of glory, your high priest that occupies what the enemy has taken from you and I. And eat from the table of healing, which is the children's bread of expansion. And I have this last question, and I am done. Can you see the crowning of the Shulchan King in your life? And Shabbat Shalom. Peace.